I started experimenting with some peptides. The literature is pretty interesting. And when it comes down to injury repair and recovery, there's pretty interesting literature surrounding BPC-157, TB-500, but this video is specifically about BPC-157, which is all the rage right now when it comes down to injury repair and somewhat recovery. But we need to get granular because I want to be able to explain sort of the safety, the potential mechanisms of actions, some of the risks that go along with it, and what exactly it's good for, but not to mention the compelling, pretty exciting literature that's out there. So let's go ahead and break it down. After today's video, I put a link down below for 25% off Seed Daily Symbiotic. Okay, a lot of stuff starts in the gut, as you know. In fact, even some of the peptides we're talking about are literally formed by the gut itself. So you have to take care of the gut, whether that comes down to digestion, whether it comes down to all these different short chain fatty acids and impacts we have in the body. But when you look at most probiotics, they're just getting completely blasted by the hydrochloric acid in your gut. So seed is interesting because their symbiotic has a prebiotic and a probiotic in one, and it's a capsule inside of a capsule. So the technology is pretty cool. We are having potentially sort of a multi-stage delivery, which is really what they're after. They're also at the very forefront of a lot of the microbiome research, whether it's talking about the gut-brain axis and the effect on the brain, short-chain fatty acids, how we can modulate glucose better. They're doing a lot of that research and they're legit. So that link down below saves you 25% off your daily symbiotic from Seed. So check them out, use that link down below in the top line of the description underneath this video. First off, what is a peptide? It sounds really scary. A peptide is just a chain or a string of amino acids in different sequences. Okay, so they have a specific structure for cell receptors that can influence sort of the actions of cells. They can influence cell behavior. They can influence gene expression, okay? So for example, insulin is a peptide, right? And if you take insulin orally, it does practically nothing, right? But insulin can save the life of someone that really needs it. Another one that's commonly known is like glucagon-like peptide one, GLP-1, right? Ozempic, Wagovi, all these that are popular right now, these are peptides, okay? So they're strings of amino acids that have actions in the body, usually based upon cell receptors. So even though they sound ominous and scary, they're pretty basic, okay? They're like a non-steroidal form of recovery, sometimes performance enhancement. But in this case, with BPC-157, the focus is predominantly on injury repair. Now, personally, I beat the heck out of my body, so I've got issues with my labrum. I've got, <laughs> I broke my scapula at one point. I've got scar tissue and I'm all hung up there. I've got L4, L5 ruptured discs, right? So I have to look at this stuff. So how does BPC-157 work? Well, it is a chain of 15 amino acids that is formed from protective proteins within the gut. Okay, so it is what is called cryoprotective. The main mechanisms in which BPC-157 works is it potentially increases growth hormone receptors in specific areas so that you can influence recovery. But more importantly, it increases the vasculature. Okay, it increases angiogenesis. So you get blood vessel formation to areas that potentially have poor vasculature, especially in those like areas like the knees, maybe the Achilles, where you don't get as much blood flow. There's also potential anti-inflammatory mechanisms that are being investigated as well. But let's take a look at some of this literature and so we understand. There's some really powerful data in the Journal of Orthopedic Research However, it is looking at animal data. And we have to understand that with these peptides, like human data is lacking, okay? So we have to be willing to look a little bit into the future and be flexible with this stuff. So with this particular study, they looked at rats where they completely detached the Achilles tendon from the calcaneal bone. So they completely detached it from the heel. They gave these rats BPC-157 alone, or they gave them BPC-157 along with uh, another compound, or they gave them a placebo. They monitored them at one day, four days, seven days, 10 days, 14 days, and 31 days. The results were pretty dang interesting. Immunohistochemically, they found that there was better, higher quality collagen formation. So what that means is that they're actually rebuilding this tendon and attaching it with better collagen integrity. Okay, now that's not it, right? They found more. They found that there were better biomechanics, there was better elasticity, they regained function significantly, and there was increased vasculature. It's all in the BPC groups. Now, what they also found is that rats that were given 6-alpha-methylprednisone, which is a corticoid steroid, which would negatively impact recovery, 
That did just that, it impacted recovery. But BPC-157 was able to override the negative effects of the 6-alpha methylprednisone, showing that this stuff is a very powerful peptide when it comes down to soft tissue or tendon or ligament repair. It's quite interesting. But if you're watching this video, you might be interested in actual muscle repair. Well, there's some interesting data there as well. There's a study that was published in Medical Science Monitor that took a look at, again, rats that had an injured gastrocnemia, so calf, and they injured it through a pretty terrible way. They crushed it, right? So through a crushing mechanism. Okay, and what they did is they gave them BPC-157 injections or a cream in two different fashions. One group they gave it daily for 14 days and one group they gave a large bolus of it right after the injury. Well, both groups actually had repair that was better than none at all, but the groups that had it consistently saw increased recovery time after time after time on each day they looked at it. What they found is that without BPC, the repair was pretty terrible, okay? It was pretty darn slow. Things weren't really working. They weren't regaining function. And as expected, if they added 6-alpha methylprednisone, it made things worse. It aggravated it. But once again, the BPC-157 was able to override the 6-alpha methylprednisone. So it was able to outdo that and still help recovery. And then without the 6-alpha methylprednisone, the BPC-157 really made some serious grounds in repairing this muscle. Once again, it's in rats, but it's still fascinating. So how exactly is this working? What's going on in the body? Mainly, it seems to be the increase in blood flow and the formation of new blood vessels. This is called angiogenesis, and it's a huge part of recovery. It's also a huge potential risk with BPC-157. Okay, that's where we kind of have to look at this and understand where it could be, I don't know, where we should have some trepidation, right? And it's obviously something that you're going to talk to your doctor about. This is something that you're not just going to go out willy-nilly and get. You're going to talk to your doctor and you're going to look over the risks and you're going to understand this. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Molecular Medicine that took a look at both in vitro and in vivo, and they found that there were increases in vessel density and new vessel formation. So that's quite interesting. So that does seem to be the biggest piece of the puzzle. Like, again, you think about an area of your body where you might get an injury, where you have a restriction of blood flow. Getting new vasculature there is a big part of proper recovery. But then there's a newer proposed mechanism, and that has to do with growth hormone receptors. Now, BPC-157 doesn't increase growth hormone directly. That's not the action of that peptide. But there was an interesting paper that took a look at the Achilles of a rat, and they exposed this Achilles tendon to BPC-157 at different dosages and different lengths of time. In both a dose and time-dependent fashion, BPC-157 increased the amount of growth hormone receptors. Okay, so what this means is that it created more docking sites for growth hormone. So then in this study, when they did add exogenous growth, growth hormone, that growth hormone was able to occupy more sites. It's like, think of it like a harbor. You have more spots for a boat to come in, so then when you do have more boats come in, they're all able to dock and supplies are able to get off the ships easier and onto land because you've got more docks available. Now what they found with this is directly ended up increasing cell proliferation. This plays a role in how we recover, in our injury repair. Okay, we have to understand this. Now what you do need to see is that when you look at this entire picture and you have potential increases in growth hormone receptors, you have uh, more angiogenesis, you have an increase in what is called VEGF, in this particular case, vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, okay, VEGF R2. This is something that is going to trigger the formation of new blood vessels, but we have to be aware that when you have malignant tissues and even benign tissues that are abnormal growths, a lot of times they are blood flow hogs and they increase vasculature independently, right? So that's going to be a bad thing. When you have something like BPC-157 and you're increasing VEGF, that's problematic for something like that. So you want to make sure you really vet this out with your doctor and make sure you don't have something else going on. It's a very important piece. But there was an overall review in the journal Cell and Tissue Repair that kind of gave an overarching view of BPC-157. They showed in this review that BBC-157 has consistently shown prompt and positive tissue healing, showing that it shows very promising results. 
Then of course they note that human data is lacking, but this is a larger scale review. Human data is lacking, but it's so promising that more research needs to be done to really see it as a viable healing tool. Additionally, they've noted that there's promisingly low adverse reactions. There seems to be very little negative effect. Now, I am not a clinician, so I can't tell you how to use this stuff. You need to talk to your doctor with that. I'll put some links down below to recommended resources with this, and I'll continue to sort of share my experiences with it as my doctor is having me use it for just various injuries. So far, the results for me have been really, really amazing. So far, at the time of filming this video, we're talking a little over a week of usage, and I have mobility back in my shoulder that I didn't have a week ago. Again, anecdotal, so take it for what it's worth. But I think the world of peptide research is fascinating, and it's worth talking to the proper doctor about. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.